Hi everyone, Jerry Bellini here from Recycled Parts for Art. Welcome to Learn at the Little House. Today's video is a, another in our series, our altered book series, and it is a pocket page. And there is our pocket. And I had so much fun making this. So let me show you how the pocket looks. Um, there's three sections to the pocket. Okay, so there's one down here. There's, let's see if I can do this and look at the camera at the same time, one here. And then there's a big one up here that you can put like a, a love letter or something really fun in there. And then there's three more on the other side. <laughs> yeah, it was really fun. I really enjoyed making it. And um, I have dangles, let's see, I have dangles on the bottom. And yeah, it was fun. So, uh, but it took a long time. So what I wanted to tell you is I had planned on making something in this video to put in the pocket, but it just, I ran out of time. It just didn't work out. So that project will be in our next video. So look forward to that. Uh, let's see, do I have anything else to say about this? All the supplies are in the description box below and uh, I am an Amazon affiliate and I do get points when you make a purchase using the links in the description box. So I really do appreciate your support in that way. And uh, let's see, that's about it. So if you have any questions, don't ever hesitate to contact me and please share this video with anybody that you think might enjoy making an altered book. So let's get started. Recently, I was asked a question about where to work in your book. And I started in the center and I'm working my way out to the right and to the left. And I have two different books, so you'll always be seeing a different page when I'm uh, doing the video. So here's the center. Here's my last page in this book. I'm gonna just fold that down. Now this is actually glued to that. I'm gonna turn the book. This is the front of my book. I'm gonna turn it so that the front of my book is facing me because I'm working this way. Now you're gonna need six pages for this and we're gonna be folding them and we're gonna fold them before we paint them because I think it will just be easier to do it that way. So the first page we're going to fold in half and then in half again. Now when you fold it in half, don't go all the way into the crack. Leave just a little bit, about an eighth of an inch, um, so that the page will, will turn. So you see, okay, half and then half and crease it down. And you're folding towards the front. The second page you're going to fold in half. Okay, the third page, you're going to just fold one quarter. All right, now let me just flip it over so you can see it. And let me stick something in there so you can see. You see that? And they don't, it doesn't have to be exact. Okay, so I've got three pages. They're all folded towards the front, towards me. And now I'm going to fold three more pages. This one I'm going to fold away from me now so and it's only a quarter so that these two match up the next one I'm gonna fold a half oops fold, fold a half and fold it that way and then this last one sorry it's already folded I've done this take five times already because my dog is making so much noise so this one is going to be folded into uh, four quarters so fold it in half and then fold it in half again so you see what we've created? It's exactly the same on both sides. See that? And we're going to get to put our special tags in here. Okay, so now the folds, you see, go towards the center. This is just, it'll make it neater when we put this together. All right, now that we've got these folded, I want you to just take a minute and just unfold it enough to put glue in it. I want you to glue it down so that it will stay, okay? So I'm gonna do that off camera. 
Max says hi. The pages are glued together and I am and they are not glued together, they're just the folds are glued down. And I'm just gonna set this book aside and let them dry and Alright, so I thought my camera was rolling and it wasn't. That happens sometimes. So I'm using an Americana uh, acrylic paint, craft paint, and I also put a little bit of this um, gloss medium in uh, in with the paint. And it's right here, okay? And I like to work in a little flat thing. And I've been just painting my pages. Alright, so I got some uh, teal paint down on my pages and I did both sides and it takes a while, you know, let it dry so the pages don't stick together. Um, but, you know, ultimately we, when we stitch this um, together along the edges, you're not really going to see the inside, but I painted the inside anyway. So, um, now that I've got some paint, I just wanted to get some color on there. Now that I've got some color, on these pieces, I'm going to treat this as one one flat surface, okay? This whole section, so from here all the way to here. And the same thing um, on this side, okay? And this one, uh, this page, I think, before I go any further, I'm going to glue down uh, to the next page just to give it a little substance. So I'm going to do that now. All right, gluing these two pages together did give it a little more substance. You can see it's laying flat now. So now what we're going to do is treat this as one page, a two page spread, and then this as another two page spread. You can see that. You see that's that's where it ends. So now I'm going to decorate my spread. And I put this piece of um, deli paper in here because I don't want to get anything on this side just yet. I'm going to do them separately. So I got a few stencils out and I'm going to play with some stencils and some colors, um, some more acrylic paint. But before I do that, I want to put um, a little bit of uh, book text on this on this page, and I am going to rip it. I want ripped edges, and I'm just going to put a little bit on there. And I don't want, I don't, sorry, I'm doing that off camera. I don't want straight edges. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to do them um, vertically. And I'm just going to play with a few of these. I just wanted a little more. Um, interest on the page. And you'll see um, as we work through our book um, layers just make things more interesting and a lot of times you do cover them up but I know they're under there Okay guys, so sorry I had to do a voiceover for this particular section. As I was filming, my husband decided to do some sawing right underneath the uh, window where I make my videos and I didn't have the heart to tell him. Um, anyway, uh, I am using Liquitex Gesso and White and if you don't have gesso you can certainly use white paint but I decided to go over uh, the book text and the teal paint to unify the whole page and also I, I kinda wanted to soften it I didn't like 
the teal paint it was too bright for me I really do like an old-fashioned vintage look so rubbing the um, gesso on with a brush and then wiping some of it back with a handy wipe is what I'm doing all right now in this clip I am also doing the insides uh, of the pockets just in case when you put a tag or an envelope in there you know you see the inside I wanted it to be all uh, finished okay so that's what I'm doing here I'm just take your time when you do this and let the layers dry because otherwise your pages may stick together and that is very frustrating so just enjoy the process and once I did that and I let it dry I went back with a uh, more white gesso and I'm now I'm using the side of my brush if you can see that in the video and I'm just kind of wiping on blobs of the white gesso and it's starting to look a little bit to me it's starting to look a little bit like plaster like old plaster and I love this look this is really more my style the grungy old recycled look so just take your time, have fun with it. All right, now that I've got um, the white back there, I decided to grab a few stencils and put some color down uh, with the stencils. And what I just showed you was a makeup sponge. I get a package of those at the dollar store. And I love those for stenciling. And I'm using a green color as you can see and I, I like this stencil a lot so I just randomly putting some of these uh, rectangles on there and then I switched over to um, another color as you can see it's like a raspberry pink and another stencil and I'm just putting a few uh, of those marks on as well just just to uh, give it a little bit of uh, contrast okay so now that I've got my little bit of stenciling on there, I decided that it's a little too bright for my liking. So I am going to put, I put a little black in my palette and I watered it down. I used water and I'm just going to use my brush and I'm going to have a clean baby wipe ready and I'm just going to grunge my page up a little bit oh you're going oh my gosh no <laughs> but you'll see it's gonna be great just give me a second so you gotta kinda work a little fast with this because you really you don't want it to dry too dark but I really just wanted to grunge it up a little bit I, I'm, I really do um, talk much, Chair. I really do like the vintage or the grungy look better than the bright and shiny. There's a place for the bright and shiny, but I like that. I don't know, I just like this darkened look. So I'm just going to play with this a little and just put a little... It's, when it's, it's black watered down, there's just a touch of white was in this um, container that I put the black in from my gesso. And so it made it a little bit gray. And I'm going to open the flaps and just get a little bit of the gray in there too. So take your time, take your time with this and just go back and forth until you're satisfied. And if you don't want to grunge it up, don't. Just leave it bright and shiny. It's okay too. Okay, so I decided to leave this clip in. It's just me working and I'm going back and forth with some uh, watered down black paint that has a little bit of white in it so let's just say watered down 
gray paint and I'm wiping it off and putting some white on and I'm just playing and having fun and the whole thing probably took me about 10 minutes but I just decided to leave it in and you can certainly fast forward through this but I wanted you to see how it was changing although ever so slightly it's changing but it is changing and I'm getting happier and happier with it and sometimes you know you have to spend a little time on something if you are not sure try it you can always cover it back up with paint and right here I opened and this is the inside of the pocket and I would encourage you to experiment in there you know if you're not sure you want to do this at all uh, or you know you've never done it and you want to try it just do it on the inside of the pocket and <laughs> I must be saying something about my uh, baby wipe that I keep calling a handy wipe there and I don't remember what that is but I I like the way it's going and I'm very happy with the way it turned out. So just take a few minutes and watch my process. And then, uh, you know, let me know what you think. So now you see I have both sides of the pocket done. The front side and the back side. And I, I really do love it. So I'm going to do this uh, again because we didn't get that on camera. So I'm putting three holes in and uh, you want to be careful when you poke your hole because this is just paper and you don't want to rip your paper. But make your hole big enough that your needle's going to fit through and I'm using a, um, a tapestry needle. So if you have a better needle than that, a thinner needle, then by all means use that. And I'm going to put three holes here in this uh, first section and I'm just eyeballing it. And then I'm going to put three holes in this section and three holes in this section. Now the closer you get down to the bottom you really, if you can possibly hold this up like this and put your holes in this way because when you, and I don't know what the um, scientific reason is for this, <laughs> but when you lay this down the pages aren't, um, you know, straight. They move, so when you put the hole in, the hole is kind of cold, kind of on an angle, I guess. All right, so once you get your holes in and take your time doing that, you might need to touch uh, them up with a little paint. You can do that after the fact. You're going to take your wax linen or whatever you've decided to use, and you really don't need that much of it. However, you might want to think if you want to put some dangles um, on the end of the string, then leave yourself a little bit extra. So I'm going to use, oh, let's see, I'm going to use like, I'm going to use like, three and a half times or four times the size because yeah because I'm like that I don't want to be caught, caught uh, short so I'm going to I think I'm going to do the opposite of what I did on this end so I'm going to put the knot on the top and you're just going to go up and down So that you have straight a straight stitch, like a running stitch. All right, I thought it would be quite painful to let you watch me put those stitches in, <laughs> but I wanted you to see me do it. So I fast forwarded this little clip, and I'm uh, doing a voiceover. So I did the running stitch, and I did leave a little bit extra string on both ends, and I'm doing a double knot so that it won't pull through the paper and uh, the extra string is for dangles a uh, little charm or whatever and if I change my mind and decide not to do that I'll just trim it off but uh, I really like the way it came out so just take your time when you're doing the stitching 
take your time because um, it can be a little uh, tedious. So I have a sense that I'm going to have a problem here. Uh, I've been messing with this and pulling it back and forth and it just feels like it's separating a little so I'm going to take some Aileen's tacky glue and put it in the crack. I have some black book binders tape. Of course it's too wide so I'm just going to cut it um, about half that size. Yeah, I just want about an inch. And this is a book, if you don't know what book binders tape is, it's more like a fabric. And I'm sorry, I'm off screen here. I'm taping it to the table. I'm over here taping it to the table so I can cut it. And I don't care if it's exactly even. I wonder if this stuff rips. Yes, it does. <laughs> Yay, so now I have two pieces. One for this side and one for the other side. Oh my gosh, did I make a mess today. Holy macaroni. And I'm going to push my finger nail in there. You can use a piece of fabric too, and I would use I would have used fabric, but I was too lazy to get up. This was right next to me in the drawer. And uh, I thought, oh, I'll just use this. And I wanted to use something black because I have black going on on my page. And you know, I like it. I was um, thinking earlier when I was working on this page, I was thinking, oh, Jerry, you know, you should put some masking tape in the crack. I think that will look, I like the way that looks, just as a little added gives it a little added interest and I didn't I'm sorry I didn't listen to myself holy mackerel will somebody please come over here and clean up this mess it's pretty bad I am not cooking dinner tonight new no, new no, new no. so burnish this down and then you know push it down with your finger as best you can and then just let it, I'm just gonna let it sit and really dry. All right, it's tomorrow. We're back, and I wanted to show you that the tape is holding up wonderfully. I glued that down with Aileen's. This is bookbinders tape, and I put it on both sides, and this thing is not going anywhere, and I'm very glad that I decided to do that now instead of later. Um, I took a Stabilo awl and went around the outside and put a little water on my finger and smudged around the edges. Uh, you can also use a permanent um, ink pad or uh, you can even use black paint if you want to. And you don't have to do anything, of course. Um, I took a Posca pen and put some white dots on some of my stencil uh, marks. And then the last thing I did was um, use my favorite pencil, which is a Kimberly General, General pencil. And I just made some more marks on the page and I kind of went around the book text and, and what have you. And I just, I love this pencil. And then I went around the outside. So um, water will not move this pencil, so it is permanent and I really enjoy using it. Oh, I did put uh, some charms on the bottom and I just, let me get in frame here so you can see, I just listed some of these charms in my Etsy shop. Uh, these are left over from my bead store days and I just, I thought that would look cute at the bottom of the book. Here we are at the bottom of the book. Can you see them? <laughs> so um, next time we're going to do uh, a project for the pockets, to put something in the pockets. But you can put, you know, love letters in there. You can put tags in there. You can put all sorts of things. And I hope you enjoyed this project. And I hope you have a blessed day full of love and recycled art. And hold on a second because I'm going to have a close-up of this page at the end of the video. And please do share uh, the link with people that you think might enjoy working through an altered book project with us. 
and I will see you next time. Bye.